All right. So let's look at uh, isolated singularities. Uh, so this is what you have if a function is not defined at, a, at an isolated point. So if I have uh, an open set, and I have a, a function defined u minus p, right, where p is some point in u. So then, uh, let's suppose this is holomorphic. So then uh, f has an isolated singularity. All right. So, uh, what kind of singularities uh, uh, do we have? So the first kind is if uh, we have uh, uh, if uh, there exists uh, uh, some some f defined in U uh, holomorphic. Uh, such that um, f of z is equal to little f of z for all z in plus p, then p is a removable singularity. Possibility if uh, um, the limit as uh, uh, z goes to p of f of z is infinity, uh, then p is a pole, right? And uh, otherwise. P is an essential singularity. All right. So you have a removable singularity. Uh, that's if you can actually extend the function through the singularity. Or you have a pole, uh, which is uh, that the function goes to infinity. Or in all other cases, it's an essential singularity. So it maybe seems a little bit uh, uh, like uh, uh, we're only catching, you know, some some cases over here. It turns out uh, that uh, either the function uh, is going to have a removal singularity. Or this, you can sort of think of this as the limit kind of existing, it's just infinity. Uh, or it's going to be really, really wild. So, uh, the, so it's, uh, so we don't need actually too many other uh, uh, definitions. Let's start with uh, removal singularities. I'll uh, start with a, what I think is, is, is a really incredible theorem. This is the um, Riemann extension theorem. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, what's incredible about it is uh, that it has a really simple proof, uh, which, is, which is a little strange. Uh, uh, so, what does it say? It's a, uh, it's, it says that uh, if uh, uh, if I have a function like this, um, holomorphic and uh, bound it, and really we'd only need to bound it near p, but 
you can always just restrict to a smaller u if you'd want to. So if we have uh, a function like this, um, holomorphic, uh, bounded, uh, this, this p is some uh, uh, some point in u, of course. Uh, then uh, what we have is that uh, uh, p is a removable singularity. To be a little weird, uh, this, is, uh, this is definitely not true for for real functions. I mean, you have lots of uh, lots of functions which are bounded and uh, not even continuous. Uh, let alone over here, what we're saying is just bounded uh, near the singularity means that it's not only continuous; it's actually holomorphic at that point. It extends holomorphically through the point. So, uh, a proof. This, this, this is the this is the interesting thing. It, it, it looks a little bit uh, like it just uh, comes out of the blue. Uh, so let uh, G uh, let it be Z minus P squared times F. All right. This is it's clearly holomorphic everywhere in in U minus P. Right, uh, and uh, we can uh, we can also uh, uh, write uh, we can also define it at p uh, uh, as zero. All right. Now, if uh, it's all working everywhere except p, possibly. Let's see what happens at p. So uh, we uh, well, let's see if it's holomorphic, right? Well, what do we do there? We we look at the difference quotient. Now, what is the difference quotient? The difference quotient. And I'll leave myself a little bit of room here. The difference quotient is. Uh, 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 well, it's this guy uh, divided by z minus p. So it's z minus p times f of z, right? Well, f is bounded. So I can take the limit as z goes to p over here, and it is 0, right? And it's Something bounded times something that goes to zero. Well, that's, the, that's the limit over here, right? That means that G, right? What does it say? G prime uh, uh, exists and it's zero, right? We have this holomorphic, right? Uh, G is uh, holomorphic. In the, in you. All right, and uh, it uh, it actually has a zero of order at least two, because the derivative at uh, at p is zero, right? So g has zero of order at least two. And then you go over here, and it's, we're, basically, we're basically finished with the proof. So uh, if we have this, let's write g of z as z minus t k minus on h of z, right? Uh, Using the lemma that, that, that we proved before, right? And here we have k is at least two, right? And uh, now uh, this 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 h is holomorphic, right? In u, uh, uh, and 
that's what this expression is. We have k is at least 2. I can divide by two of these, right? So we have that uh, f of z is z minus p k minus 2 uh, h of z, which is still holomorphic in u, right? I mean, this side is. This is, of course, wasn't defined at, uh, at, uh, uh, at p a priori, right? But this guy is holomorphic. This is clearly holomorphic. Uh, it's holomorphic at p because k is being an angle to 2, right? Yeah, so it's a removal singularity. OK, so the uh, Riemann extension term leads to the following corollary, which lets us uh, classify uh, poles and figure out when is uh, uh, when is something a pole? So corollary, uh, supposing that uh, open and T in U as before, uh, and suppose that we have a function with a removable singular, oh, well, sorry, <laughs> with an isolated singularity at, uh, at P, with a monomorphic, and one, is uh, uh, if f uh, has a pole at um, p, uh, then there is a k, uh, some integer k, such so that uh, g of z, z minus k, uh, f of uh, z that uh, this has uh, has a removable singularity all right um, so basically uh, what this says is that if uh, uh, if it has a pole then uh, it cannot go, f, f goes to infinity, but it cannot go to infinity faster than z minus p to the k goes to zero. Meaning that uh, uh, it goes to infinity at the same rate as 1 over z minus p, uh, p to the k. Uh, it has to have, uh, it has to go uh, to infinity only as something of finite order. So this actually means that if I have something uh, that has an essential singularity, it has to be really wild, right? I cannot clamp it down, uh, you know, multiply it by, by some power of z minus p to the k, oh, so some power of z minus p, and expect it to just uh, be bounded, right? It's, 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 gonna, uh, it's gonna be wild, it's not, you know, if it has an essential singularity, it cannot go to infinity, but uh, there might be some, well, there is going to be some, uh, sequence of points along which it goes to infinity very fast, much faster than uh, uh, this goes to zero for any k. All right, so that's the first uh, direction. The other direction is uh, if uh, there exists uh, a k uh, such that uh, this, this g, uh, let me rewrite it. Uh, Uh, this um, has a removable singularity. Uh, then uh, he is either a pole or a removable. Singularity. I mean, it could be. We could have started with something and this uh, removable singularity, then this thing is still going to have a removable singularity. Uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, you know it can be at worst a pole, right? If I have if this is uh, uh, if this has a removable singularity for some k, so it basically if this thing is bounded for some k near p, then it's either a pole or a remo removable singularity. It cannot be an essential singularity. 
Uh, we can use that to define the order of the poll. So the order of the poll is uh, uh, the smallest k uh, that works over here. So the smallest k above is the order of uh, the poll. Right, so the smallest k in part one. Right, so uh, in part one over here. Right, that's the order. Uh, because clearly, uh, a higher k, right, uh, would uh, uh, would just make things better. Right, but the smallest one that will work that's the order of the poll. Uh, and again, if uh, k is one. Uh, the poll is symbol, and that is just wording for you know poll of order one. So just saying it's a simple poll. All right, proof one. Uh, suppose F has a poll. At uh, uh, at p, right? So suppose that we have a poll, then uh, uh, f is not zero in some punctured neighborhood, right? Because it goes to infinity and can't stay. You know, if it has any zero, at some point it's not going to have any zeros. Um, or small enough r, of course not, not defined at p, so uh, like this. Well, if we have that, then 1 over f is uh, holomorphic in, in this uh, neighborhood. It actually goes to 0, right? So it's bounded. Uh, okay, well, maybe not in this side uh, of the R, but uh, it's bounded for some some R. We could make the R smaller uh, to make it bounded, right? Because it actually goes to zero. One over it goes to zero, right? So near P, it has to be bounded. So that means that it's, um, uh, we can extend it. Let's see what I named the extension. In the, it looks like it's, uh, 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 I named H. So uh, there exists an H uh, out on this, um, uh, on this entire disk. So I get uh, H of Z as 1 over F of Z. Um, if z is in the function this. All right, we also know that, that h has to have a zero. I mean, this, this goes to zero. So h should be a zero, right? So what we can do is we can use the lemma and uh, h at z is uh, z minus p to the k for some some uh, positive integer k, uh, uh, let's call this um, q of z, right? Uh, where q uh, at uh, p is not zero. Now that means uh, q is not zero anywhere uh, in the in the disk, right? Also, so, so q non zero in anywhere in the disk because, well, it can only be uh, uh, h cannot be zero, right? Uh, in oh, I almost forgot over here. There should be in the function name, of course. All right. 
So, uh, so we have uh, uh, this Q. If I, well, uh, what is Z minus P to K times F? Well, F was uh, one over F was uh, was H, right? So, uh, so I have this Z minus P to the K, and then uh, uh, one over Z minus P to the K uh, Q, right? Which is just one over Q to the uh, Q of Z, and, and Q is never zero in this in this disk. So therefore, one over Q is holomorphic, right? So we have uh, we have uh, part one. So let's prove uh, number two. So uh, what we do is um, well we know well G, uh, which is z minus p to the k f z has a removable singularity. So uh, G has a removable singularity. What does that mean? That means that we can write G as, uh, well, I mean, maybe I won't need any of these. Maybe L is 0. Uh, uh, but uh, maybe so, where P is holomorphic uh, 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 um, near P, so including at P, and uh, P at P is not equal to zero. Right? Then let's look at F, uh, which is, well, that's uh, uh, it's G. Uh, divided by z minus p to the k, right? Well, that uh, means if z minus p l minus k times p z, right? Now, we know that, that p is holomorphic, right, near uh, p, and it's non-zero, it's continuous. This thing goes to some non-zero value. Right? This thing, well, could go, could go either to uh, I guess one if L is equal to k. It could go to zero if L is bigger than k, uh, or it could go to infinity if uh, if L is smaller than k. Right? So limit uh, as uh, z goes to p uh, of uh, of uh, f of uh, z is, uh, well, it's either 0 if uh, uh, l is bigger than k uh, or whatever phi at uh, p is if uh, l is equal to k or infinity if uh, l smaller than k. Okay. Well, I just mean, well, these are removable, right? Uh, the, the, I mean, the, the singularity of f is removable in these two cases, and uh, it's a pole in this case, and we're done, right? This is this is the entire the entire proof. All right.
All right, so uh, this actually tells us something about uh, uh, holomorphic functions and zeros and poles. Uh, it says that uh, uh, there, uh, so zeros and poles are sort of the opposites of each other. Uh, if you if you think about what we're doing, is uh, if you think about especially the proof of of, of part one, uh, you see it that uh, uh, you know, we, we have the following. Uh, we have uh, that. Uh, uh, so f has zero of order k, even only if one over f has a pole of order k, or vice versa, right? Um, because it just means there is a there is a factor of uh, you know, it's, it's, it's basically a, 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 a holomorphic function, which is non-zero, and a factor of z minus uh, p to some k, which could be positive or negative, right? And we either get um, uh, this uh, a, a pole if that if that k is negative, and or a zero if that k is positive, or we get uh, neither if k is zero. Now. Uh, that sometimes leads to this uh, uh, weird uh, terminology that we might say that uh, you know a function of a, a zero of order zero that just means it's not zero, uh, or we'll say that it's uh, it has a zero of, of order minus two that just means it has a pole of of order two, or if it has a pole of order minus three that just means that it has a zero of order three. Now it's it's best to <laughs> avoid this if, if you can, but sometimes it it makes uh, certain statements uh, easier. But there's definitely this uh, uh, this uh, 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 back and forth, uh, if you will, uh, between zeros and poles. All right. Mm -hmm.